Ferns are an important part of many forests in Ontario and in Canada. Today we're going to look at some of the features that will help you to identify a fern. So here I just have a variety of different fronds from the ferns, from different fern species, and we'll be using these to look at some of the characteristics. And some of the things that we'll look at are the growth form, frond shape, how the frond itself is divided, fertile versus non-fertile fronds, we'll look at the sori shape, and a few other aspects such as hairs or bracts that might be part of the uh, fern. So we'll start off by talking about uh, terminology when we're referring to ferns. So the first thing is what we see in, in, front, of, in front of us here. This is called the frond. So all the way from the, the ground to the tip of the leafy section, that would be your frond. And then when we talk about the blade, we're actually talking about just the starting of the leafy section here to the tip. So that's called the blade. Within the blade then, we have, uh, if we divide the sort of main stem into two sections, the part from the beginning of the blade till the tip, this uh, stem portion here is called the rachis, and any part below this first green part down is called the stipe. And then looking at the leafy green part here, each one of these sections here is a pinna or pinny if plural, and within a pinna we have pinules. So each one of these here is a pinule. And then sort of this stem-like portion that goes through the pinna is called the costa. So we're going to look now at frond division and I've got three fronds here in front of me or three fronds from three different species of fern and uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit but first looking at this one here this one would be once divided again here is your rachis going down the middle and the pinny are coming off of the rachis there. The second one here, the middle one here, this one would be twice divided because you have the pinny coming off the rachis and then each one of these is divided into pinules. And for the third one here, again coming off the rachis, we have a pinna here, we have pinules, and then these pinules are further divided. So that makes it three times divided. So here I removed three of the pinnae from the fronds that we just looked at. So again, here's your once divided. This would have come directly off of the rachis. Here is um, twice divided. So again, the rachis is here. It's divided into pinna and then into pinules. And this one here, the pinules are divided again so that makes it three times divided. Frond shape is also something that we look at when identifying ferns. And here we have sort of three different shapes. So the one on the left here, you can see how it goes down to the base. The uh, pinna gets smaller and smaller. And if we go up to the top also, you'll notice how it gets quite a bit smaller at, at the top quite quickly there. So this next one here, if you look at the shape, it seems like it's almost widest at the base and then again goes, narrows towards the tip here. And this one here is a really interesting uh, frond. You can see how long and kind of spindly looking it is. And this would have gone even longer to the, to the base. So it's quite long and spindly looking. And the other thing to look at sort of while we're here, especially with this middle frond, is you see the two pinny at the bottom and how the pinules around the costa are actually asymmetrical. So the pinules above the costa are shorter than the pinules below the costa. And that also helps to um, identify uh, a frond down to uh, the genus, and then you can also look at these first 
pinules that are right next to the, the stipe here, they are much longer than the next ones. Here is a frond that has a very interesting shape to it. <clears throat> so you see here how it sort of forms a circle starting here, coming around all the way to here, and here this first division, the pinnae are coming off of that, around that circle. So that's a fairly unique uh, shape for a uh, frond. One of the characteristics that we use to help us identify ferns is looking at their growth habit. So we're looking at this one here and you can kind of see that all the fronds come from the same area. And even if we look below, there you can see that indeed all the fronds are sort of coming from one clump. For other ferns, they actually spread by above ground stems or underground rhizomes and so the fronds then come up individually which you can see is what's happening with this species that's right here. All ferns reproduce using spores. That's one of the characteristics of a fern. However, where they bear those spores or how they produce what we call a fertile frond will vary from species to species. So we'll look at this one here and you'll see that there are some of these fronds that are laying quite close to the ground. Whereas there's others that tend to be quite upright and we'll follow this frond up as we go. And you'll notice that the pinnae at the top of the frond look different than, than the other ones. And this is because the spores are born on the back of this frond and are born in sori. So there you can see the sori on the back of the top pinny on this frond. So some of the fronds on this species are fertile and contain the sori and other fronds are infertile and they, on the back, if we turn one of these over, you'll see that all the way up there are no sori on the back of these fronds. Some species of ferns bear their spores on a totally different looking frond than the green leafy frond that we see in front of us here. So this species here, if we zoom go a little bit closer, we'll actually notice here is the remnants of the fertile frond. So it's, it's kind of withered now at this point, but here these black brownish bodies here are actually the sporangia, which contain the spores. So in this case, there are no sori. There are just the sporangia that are attached in branches along the fertile frond. So in this fern here, all the fronds look very similar. And so if we turn them over, so this one, for example, you can see that there are sori along the back. And there might be some other ones, like this one here, that do not have sori. So these are again, they are both fertile and infertile fronds, but they look quite similar. Although all ferns do reproduce using spores, there are some that also use other mechanisms for reproduction. Now look at this fern here. First of all, you'll notice the frond that I'm kind of following here, how long and tapering it is at the end. So it's kind of an interesting growth form. But also if we turn the frond over, you can see here little ball-like structures that are on the bottom of the fern and if these fall to the ground or when they fall to the ground and are in the right conditions they will form or begin another fern. For many ferns the spores are uh, the reproductive structure are born on the back of the frond in sori and the shape and location of the sori can be a really important identification characteristics. So 
So we'll just zoom on in on these four ferns here just to take a look at what their sori look like. So we'll look a little bit closer at the sori on these ferns. So here you can see again, this is the back of the frond. And you can see that the sori are sort of long lines and uh, shaped almost like chevrons on the back of the pinna. We'll move to another one here. Here they just look like circles with little white dots in the middle. This one here might be a little bit harder to see, but the sori there are sort of comma shaped. And finally here we have again sort of like little balls in a line for following the margins of the pinny. Finally, I just wanted to show you a few field guides that would help you in identifying ferns. So this, there's this Peterson's field guide, ferns of northeastern and central Ontario. Um, just to know that it does tend to be a little bit uh, technical and also it talks a fair bit about the venation, which is something I haven't really talked about. Uh, this little booklet here, Fern Finder, I've often found quite helpful. It's it's easy, the key is a little bit uh, different, but a nice small booklet to carry with you. And finally, this book here, which is Woodlot Biodiversity, has a section, a good section on, on ferns. It is uh, for Southern Ontario and uh, covers a lot more stuff than just ferns, so it's also a good book uh, to have if you're uh, going to be exploring a forest. So hopefully that's uh, helpful information in terms of identifying ferns.